I know I'm always pissing you guys off, but it's time to do it again. I'm gonna say something that's gonna make you a little bit mad, but if you watch the whole video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Car enthusiasts are criminals. In fact, we are some of the smartest criminals out there. When you tell somebody you're a car enthusiast, they don't automatically assume you're a criminal or anything like that. They'll just assume you have a hobby. But us car enthusiasts, we know how illegal it can be to have a piece of metal with wheels. We know every single rule against cars and we still decide to break them on purpose. We know the consequences, but we don't care. When have you ever heard one of your friends say, damn, I wanna make my car fast, but these darn emission devices, I best not mess with them. <laughs> you'll never hear that. Just the same way that you'll never hear, hmm, this freeway sure looks empty. I better keep it on the speed limit. There might be a sneaky cop out there. <laughs> you never hear that, right? I guess it's just in our nature to be criminals. The funny thing is that it doesn't matter how many laws they come out against cars or anything like that. We, we don't really care. We'll just add it to the list. We'll say something like, this is illegal now? Shit. I guess I'll worry about it when I get caught, right? Gotta put my taxes to work. Let's see how fast this Ford Explorer goes. We'll get caught eventually. For now, we're not worried about it though. It's not just the street racing, the drifting in empty parking lots, driving unsafe vehicles. It's not just that. Some people in the car scene literally operate like the most organized crime mob out there. And I'm gonna go over a few of the personalities to paint a picture for you. Um, let's start with the... Let's start with the card importers. So... The car importers are like the El Chapo of the car community. They sneak in bricks from the 80s and they sell them to you at the highest price. And your dumbass buys them. You don't, you don't even care. You pay top dollar. You know, if you get caught, you'll be in big trouble, but you still spend the money just for fun. You'll find some other friends that also enjoy those bricks and you guys will do lines together. And I'm talking about car cruises here. <sighs> Let's talk about the smog technicians. The smog technician is like your hitman. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. They'll charge top dollar. You don't really know them, but you know that they'll get the job done once you pay them. You don't even have to interact with them that much. I don't know if you've ever dealt with the smog technician, but when you're texting them, they kind of reply in the same way as a hitman. They'll be like, what do you want? When do you need it done by? Send me the payment. It's done. I just want to say one thing. Once the job is done, I don't know you. That's how it works, right? It's very similar. That's your hitman right there. Then you got the, the car tuners. Car tuners are gonna be like the hacker you hire for a major heist. The more money you pay them, the better they're gonna be. You don't wanna cheap out on your tuner. If you cheap out on your tuner, shit's gonna go sideways. Your shit's gonna blow up. You're not gonna have a good getaway car. You're done for. It's hard to find a good tuner, but if you ever dealt with a tuner, you know that they'll use as little words as possible they're always in their computer, always focused. They'll be looking at their computer screen the same way Mexicans look at Camaros. They fucking love that shit. Nobody gets it, but they do. They're really into it. From what I've seen, the way to identify a good tuner is that they gotta have a certain level of sleep deprivation. If they don't look like their whole family line just got exterminated, they're probably not a good tuner. You probably can't trust them. So keep that in mind. Here's another one. From my observations, I can say that car enthusiasts and crackheads are not so different. And you might be asking yourself, why? Well, both of us constantly keep lying to ourselves saying that we can stop whenever we want. We can sell all of it and we'll make our money back. But we're more likely to end up homeless, living in our cars than quitting. We just can't put the needle down. The tachometer here, I'm talking about the dash. That, that's all I'm talking about, relax, relax. What can I talk about next? Let's see. So in the car community, there's also big car clubs, which, are targeted by the cops and closely monitored. Does that not sound like a gang to you? I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounds like a gang. Car clubs have these sort of territory wars where fast boys from other cities will come in, they'll challenge you to a race and you guys gotta go in a battle to prove who's, who's superior, who's the top dog. It's funny because if you ever spend some time around a car club, they're actively trying to recruit you in. They'll try to convince you of all the positive, they'll throw in words like brotherhood protection, connections. That sounds like the mob. I swear, they're, they're really pushy with it. Are you sure I don't have to get jumped to go in your car club? I don't have to catch any bodies? Okay. But yeah, the, the underground scene is, is really big in the when it comes to cars, especially Texas 2K. They get down. They, they're pros at what they do. If you have a 600 horsepower car and you try to go to Texas 2K, Bro, you'll be the camera car. You'll be all the way in the back recording the races. You'll be like, Ew. big ass engines. 
high horsepower, a lot of back shots, car spinning flames out the back and shit. Pop, pop, pop. Sometimes I do feel kind of bad though, because we're polluting the environment. Because let's let's be honest, the, the gases coming out of our tailpipes are not the cleanest. We contaminate as much as cow shit, and some of your bills even look like cow shit. But <laughs> that's besides the point. Anyways, anyways, Texas 2K, man, they got... They got fast cars. You'll be lining up next to an 80s Caprice and you're like, I got this shit. Fucking downshift. And you hear, you hear a little whine. Some shit like that, right? You hear a little whine, you're like, that's the power steering bell squeaking. Let's go. One, two, three. And when you take off, you see that shit squat. You see that shit. That shit takes off, right? You're done for. You're done for. That wasn't a power steering squeak. That was a supercharger. And you just got gapped. I bet you never would have guessed that grandma's car had 2,000 horsepower, right? Why do you think grandma was never late to church? Fucking sleepers, man. Sleepers will get you. We got pretty good at blending in. We're pretty good at avoiding detection. Some of us, when we're not racing, we change back to our original wheels and we try to blend in with the traffic. Cars like mine have a little exhaust valve that makes your exhaust quiet when a cop is around. Some agent 007 shit, but that's, that's nothing compared to cannonball cars. And for those of you who don't know what cannonball cars are, let me explain to you. Cannonball cars are cars that are strictly designed to fly across the fucking United States as fast as possible, nonstop, without getting caught. That's the most fucking illegal thing you can do when it comes to cars. Just saying it makes me feel dirty. We always wanna take it to the next level. When have you heard somebody from a different hobby say, you know what, Jeffrey? I'm having a great time here, but you know what sounds really good right now? Prison. <laughs> if you do too much, these cannonball cars are insane. Have you ever seen the inside of a cannonball car? They got all these high-tech gadgets all around. The interior kind of looks like a fucking Apache helicopter. <laughs> it's like, dude, are you gonna race or are you recording the street view for Google? What the fuck are all these radars for? Let's move on to the next point. So, some of us can't even read, but somehow we're smart enough to figure out the loopholes in the DMB system and use them to our advantage. We become the best paid lawyers out there when it comes to paperwork surrounding cars. Do you really think I paid a hundred bucks for my 1995 Nissan 240, bro? And I don't wanna, I don't wanna snitch on ourselves here, but I heard stories of some of you driving around with a blank bill of sale from a car that you bought two years ago, just with the pen next to it. Like, do you really think that cop is gonna believe you when he pulls you over? He magically sees that you bought the car today. He's not gonna believe you, bro, try something else. Some of you really geek out out there. Some of you become experts in foreign policy. Some of you are like, <laughs> Well, 1975 cars don't require emission testing. However, if you import a car from the Japanese domestic market and it's under 25 years old, under the Imported Vehicle Safety Compliance Act, you can actually register in the following states. You're not that smart. Where, where did this shit come from? Where was this energy when you needed to graduate with the 2.0? Where was this at? You guys do surprise me. You guys really do. You guys are smart, but not all of you. Not all of you are that smart. Some of you are actually pretty dumb. And I'm talking about the people that have a straight pipe exhaust all the way back and they have a pop tune. Come on, bro, come on. Do you really think a cop is gonna hear your car and say, hmm, that is definitely a nice sounding Subaru. Nobody's gonna mistake that sound for gunshots. Bro, you're asking to get pulled over. You're asking for it. I don't even feel bad for you. If you don't like having a car, just get rid of it, just sell it. You don't have to do all this. Some sort of masochist. You wanna get punished. Might be into some freaky shit too. I think that's it. That's all I came up with. I just came up with this video idea yesterday when I was drinking coffee and I just wanted to do it because that's what I was feeling like. This is something completely different and I just wanted to switch the flow because you never know. There might be people out there trying to copy your flow. You can't copy creativity. You can't copy this. If you guys want to see more creative content, go and watch this playlist right here. That's the vet story. Drop some comments down below. Let me know maybe some of those sketchy things I may not consider or maybe I missed in this video. I should probably watch my car.